What's up guys, Nito here, and welcome back. Uh, I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but I wanted to do a little showcase of the League Starter I've been playing in Crucible League. Um, I'm playing a Storm Rain Deadeye. And this is really my first experience playing with Storm Rain, and uh, I kind of have been mostly winging it. Uh, didn't really plan this build out too much beforehand, but I did discover some interesting tech that I wanted to make use of here. Um, the idea for the build really came around uh, wanting to use Occupying Force. So what that does is basically, instead of having a Mirage Archer that's attached to you, it, it will summon Mirage Archers um, up to three of them, um, but you can't be, they can't be too close to each other. So. You, see how there's like this Mirage Archer that gets summoned and it has this ring around it. If if you're inside that ring, you cannot summon another Mirage Archer, which makes this kind of a little bit of a clunky node, um, right? Because like, if I'm here, I'm not going to resummon. But if I'm outside, I'm going to get multiple, um, multiple Mirage Archers. And that's really powerful because it basically turns the Mirage Archer um, support into something like 84% more damage or something like that, um, which is obviously really strong. And then if you're using Anomalous Mirage Archer, like I am, you can actually get two additional projectiles from um, your, Mirage Archer, your Mirage Archer. So like it gets even stronger for a skill that scales damage based on the number of projectiles you have. Um, note that this also cuts the duration of Mirage Archer in half, but there is a uh, Bow Mastery that gives 100% increased Mirage Archer duration, so that kind of negates that um, downside a little bit. Um, so we currently have like a little over 4 second Mirage Archer duration, like 4.5 seconds or something like that. So it's not too bad. Um, but the other interesting thing is that with Storm Rain, because the arrows stick in the ground for a while and they're persistent, you can actually see, like, I don't have to attack to resummon um, multiple Mirage Archers. Like, as long as there's arrows in the ground, I can just be moving. And as soon as I get outside the range, as long as something is still alive within the initial attacks area, you'll automatically summon the extra Mirage Archers as you move. So it helps a lot with like clearing and it helps a lot with bossing as well um, because you can just be moving in a circle around the boss and you'll just continually resummon your Mirage Archers as long as you've, you've attacked you know, relatively recently and the boss is still taking damage from the, um, the arrows that are in the ground, you'll just keep resummoning Mirage Archers as you move around. So it helps keep that uptime um, pretty high and then you kind of get around the clunkiness of having to move outside of the AOE of um, that occupying force node. So um, it actually turns it into quite a good utility and um, damage node that I think is worth picking up for a build like this, really for any rain uh, skill type build. So toxic rain, rain of arrows, storm rain, blast rain, all of those can kind of make use of this tech. Um, and yeah, there's a couple other things that I'm doing here. So you might notice that I am actually pathing all the way up to Mind Over Matter. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can use the Mind of the Council um, helmet, which gives uh, attack skills have added lightning damage equal to 6% of maximum mana. And you lose 3% of mana when you use an attack skill. So basically, um, the idea here is that because we have these new um, instant leech masteries, so 10% 10, 10 of leech is instant, that's going to apply to both your uh, mana leech and your life leech. And so if your mana pool is, is counting as, or is effectively uh, extra HP, um, that instant life is basically, or like that 10% instant leech is kind of like getting doubled to 20% because you have 10% of your life and 10% of your mana both getting instantly leached. Um, and so you just kind of like double the effectiveness of that node and it's really powerful. And it also negates the downside of Mind of the Council because it's instant. So 
you're instantly recovering more than that 3% of mana uh, that you're losing. So um, it's it's very strong, and it's because Storm Rain hits so many times, each of those hits has the potential to, to instantly leech up to uh, 10%. So um, that also combined with this uh, excess sustenance, 15% chance to gain 200 life on hit with attacks, because we're hitting so many times, like, it's just really powerful, really good uh, sustain, and it's it'll just, like, kind of instantly pop you back to full most of the time, as long as you have a bunch of arrows stuck on the ground. So that's really powerful. Um, and then the last, like, really cool thing that I'm doing here is I'm using Kineticism, which gives you attack projectiles, always uh, inflict bleeding, maim, and knockback. So obviously we don't really care about bleeding and maim because we're playing a lightning build, but we do care about the knockback. Um, and this also prevents your projectiles from piercing, forking, or chaining, but that's not really important because we're using a rain skill and those don't benefit from pierce, fork, or chain anyways, so uh, we don't really care about that. But uh, the knockback is what's important here, you can see I'm also using Empire's Grasp to reverse direction of knockback. And what this ends up doing is, because we have these three uh, Mirage Archers, each Mirage Archer is going to effectively pull the enemy with, with their knockback towards that Mirage Archer. And so if you have three of them, you're trying to pull the enemy in three different directions at once, and what ends up happening is they just get stuck. They just get, like, they can't really move anywhere because they're, as long as the Mirage Archers are kind of like spread out evenly, you're just going to be like pulling it, knocking it back in every direction at once. And it's just kind of, kind of like go like this. Um, like it's just going to kind of just stay in one spot and just like jiggle around a bunch like that. Um, and it's really strong. It's really good, like crowd control. Um, and let me see if I can find like a tankier enemy that I can demonstrate that on. Okay, yeah, you kind of see it on this guy over here, but, like, uh, everything just kind of gets stuck. Um, and it makes it really easy because you can kind of just uh, dodge around, and uh, even the tankier stuff like Crucible mobs... Like, here's a Crucible. I'll try uh, charging this up a little bit. This is, a, I think, like a Tier 13 map, so I don't want to get, like, too crazy with it because this character is not super tanky, but I'll charge it up a bit and see if I can demonstrate kind of uh, what I'm talking about here. Let's try that. Um, so you can see like everything kind of just gets knocked back fairly easily. Um, and it's fairly simple to just kind of avoid stuff and it, it just prevents stuff from getting in your face, which is kind of what you want as a <clears throat> as a Deadeye. You want to just avoid everything if you can and just outrange it and um, this is a really good way of doing that basically. Um, and then the other interesting thing that we're doing is we're using some of the new support gems so we are using mana forged arrows and what that's going to do is that uh, while we're attacking we are going to trigger uh, additional skills as we're spending mana so you can kind of see um, a bunch of arrows are firing out as I'm shooting, so it's maybe a little hard to see there. This, so that was Frenzy right there. Um, in, in, we actually have two Mana Forge arrows set up. So we have, uh, over here we have, uh, Innervate, Lightning Arrow, and Overcharge. So basically we're shooting Lightning Arrow, which has, shocks enemies as though dealing 290% more damage. And we're using overcharge support to make that even, you know, sh shock enemies as though dealing 690% more damage. So that is a great way to apply shocks to pretty much everything, uh, even like higher health targets. And then we're also using innervate support, which is going to give us some flat lightning damage, as well as additional chance to shock for a lightning arrow. Uh, and that lightning uh, damage is going to apply to our other skills as well. So. It's also going to going to apply to our storm rain as long as lightning arrow has done a um, has has killed something recently. So which uh, wall mapping is pretty much all the time because mana forge arrows gets triggered fairly regularly. Um, and then the other uh, mana forge arrow setup is using ensnaring arrow, which um, gives ensnared enemies take twenty percent increased projectile damage from attack hits. 
and it also slows enemies down. So uh, again, another nice form of crowd control there, and it's all kind of automated. And then we're using Frenzy, of course, to gain Frenzy charges, and then we just have GMP. Um, another thing I was going to test here, which I didn't end up getting around to, but uh, I'll just mention it, is you can actually use something like Mirror Arrow and trigger basically a clone so that it, as kind of a distraction towards enemies. So you trigger that, that minion and, um, you know, enemies go for the minion instead of you. So that is potentially another really cool thing you can do here with Mana Forged Arrows. So this uh, has been just a really nice, really strong support. Uh, highly recommend it for any bow build this league. Um, there's just a lot of interesting uses for it. As far as damage, like the, I kind of wanted to do this whole mana scaling thing so that I could test how hard it is to scale attack, you know, like attack mana cost and, and try to like spend a lot of mana on you know, Mana Forge skills, and it ended up being, you know, not that great, honestly, because, like, you know, the mana cost is, like, 30 for Ensnaring Arrow, and 30 for Frenzy, and 31, so, like, it's, unless, even, even with a full six link setup, like, it would be hard to scale that too high, um, and basically, you get 1% more damage with hits and ailments per one mana cost, so, at, you know, I think Lightning Arrow had 31 mana cost, so that's 31% more, but then you can see that Mana Forged Arrows also has skills deal 31% less damage on it. So you end up you end up needing at least like 50 something percent more damage in order to just break even. So um it's it's actually pretty hard to scale the flat uh cost of most uh attack bow attacks. So um yeah, and I didn't end up like going for like the full mana cost scaling mana forged arrows setup, but I did just kind of want to test it, so that's why I ended up doing that. Um, you know, I'm just using like an Ellie bow with some actually it's more fizz than Ellie, um, but like uh, it's not it's nothing crazy here. And then my tree is just like some flat cold, and then. This node's really cool because it gives local attack speed, so 27% increased attack speed, then, uh, but then you deal like 15% less global damage. So it ends up being like a kind of a halfway between a quill rain and like a regular bow. Um, but it's also like, uh, I think it's 7 or 8% more damage overall, so it's a really nice node to have. Um, and then this one, you just get some extra AoE. Um, and yeah, everything else on here wasn't anything special, I think. But um, yeah, I, I haven't put a whole lot of currency invested into this character just because I don't plan on playing it for that much longer. There's some other builds I want to test out, and so I'm probably going to reroll soon. Um, but this this build, like for a build that I literally didn't plan at all, like I didn't even have a POB or a tree set up before League started. Um, I still don't really have one uh, a POB, so like I kind of just winged the whole thing. Uh, it's been pleasantly, surprisingly okay. Um, like it's taken me up to I'm I'm in like tier 15 maps now. Um, so yeah, it does red maps okay, and like with the all the crowd control you get from the knockback stuff, you can kind of handle some of the crucible stuff to a degree. Um, I've been farming a lot of logbooks and doing a lot of expedition with this character, and it does pretty well at those. So um, all that instant leech uh, really keeps you alive quite well, and, and that and the knockback as well um, has been really nice. So um, yeah, it's it's been a fun character to play, but I think I'm ready to try something a little bit different. Um, so hopefully I'll have another video soon on whatever I do next. But uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in and uh, I will see you next time.